Okay, we've got uh, we've got all the surface tin that we want to tin. So every tin surface is going to have lead applied to it. And if any lead overlaps the edge of the tinned area, it will not stick to the steel. So this is a little more a little more intense, a little more time consuming. You can see he's just kind of flicking that that bar and trying to get the tip of it soft. And when that bar gets soft and starts to melt down. You can see that it just kind of uh, mushes into the area. So there you can see how the lids is pushing that stick and as it gets soft it, it kind of pushes itself right into the uh, tinned area and it sticks. It sticks to our tin surface. The heat he's applying to get this, the uh, lead stick to melt like that is also melting the tinned area and they're creating a, a bond, melted bond. Now we'll do this over and over and over again. We'll lay down several layers right next to each other. And after we get all these layers laid down um, in a certain area, we'll come back and use our uh, hardwood paddles and more heat to get this lead to the consistency of warm melting butter. Like I said before, you don't, you don't want it uh, soft like a liquid, otherwise it's going to be on the floor. You definitely do not want to wear sandals when you're doing this operation on a vertical surface. You can see here that we're applying another layer on top of what he already had. That's how you build it up. You build it up very slowly and just one little, one layer at a time. Now he's going to come back and lay another, another bead down the front of that, uh, that flange there. We want to have plenty of material on when we get in, so when we get into our filing operations, we're not having to go back in and re-lead a low spot. I'd rather have a little more lead uh, on than, or a lot more lead on than we need right now, uh, than have to heat the whole area up all over again and try to lay more lead in. Okay, we've got our uh, wood, hardwood paddles with a little bit of beeswax on them. The reason we put beeswax on them is so that the uh, paddles don't get all burnt up. It's hard enough to keep them from getting burnt up as it is, but the beeswax also keeps the uh, paddles from sticking to the lead as we're laying the lead. You can see how, how that lead is just about the consistency of warm butter. And you can shape it. You just you still got to keep the flame going back over and back over, keeping that temperature range in where it's comfortable for uh, smoothing smoothing out your lead. You can see by looking at his the tip of his paddles, it's it's touched the flame several times. But these hardwood paddles, they're usually maple or some hardwood. They'll last a long time through several many many operations of leading. This is a difficult area. You need to use several different paddles with several, several different uh, configurations, shape configurations on the face. You want to try to get it shaped as close as you can to what the original shape is when, when you go to file it. But you also want to make sure that uh, you don't have any low spots that you have to go back in and, and refill.
he's getting close to the shape he wants now, and when he gets gets the lead in the general shape that he wants, then uh, we'll move on and we'll lead another area on the on the inner fender here. Now we're going to add more lead to another area adjacent to the area that we just uh, filled. So you can see that he's heating that stick up and just the tip of the stick will just kind of smush, mush out onto the tin surface. When the solder is that warm it's also heating up the tin surface and the, the stick, the solder stick and the uh, tin surface are actually melting together and bonding. So we're going to file that flange there when he's all done leading. So we're putting plenty of lead on there, plenty of lead to work with. We'll even come out and he just led it over a hole and that's a mounting hole for a piece of trim. We'll come along after we're done filing, locate that hole from the back side and clean it out so that we've got a, a trim locating hole again. We just keep laying, laying down one bead after another, one after another, one after another. You gotta be patient, you can't rush, rush the lead or the tinning operation. These concave areas are can be difficult to deal with. You're kind of throwing the heat into the center and the heat's spreading out on, on each side. But you see he's laying another bead right alongside the, the first bead he laid. He'll come along and lay another bead right next to that as it gets towards the inner inner side of the fender. Looks like he's got got way more lead in there than we need, but by the time you get everything soft and you start shaping it with your paddles, you're a lot better off to have more lead to work with than not enough. Even though lead is expensive, you just you really don't want to skip skip on the amount of lead you use. If you have to go back in and fill low spots all the time. That can, that can be expensive too because you're burning up a lot more labor, you're burning up more uh, oxyacetylene and you're better off to put more lead down the first time. That's a nice looking bead there, a real nice looking bead. Someday this guy might get good at this. <laughs> That's another good bead there. Lots, lots of good substance there to work with on the on the paddles. There's our uh, cardboard pattern that we made before we melted the old lead out, and we just lay it up there to see uh, see how close we're getting to to our original shape. And he can tell if he wants to put more in or or not.
See how that lead wanted to run and he had to back his flame off? It's just in a good, formable state. Now we get into the forming part. You'll have to go back in and heat that area up a little bit because it's allowed itself to cool. If you're doing a, a big lead job like this and uh, it comes around to break time, you're really defeating yourself by taking a, taking a break because you have to come back in and get everything back up to heat again and that takes time. So once you're committed to letting a certain area, you want to stick with it until you got the whole area done. Constantly heating and shaping, constantly heating and shaping. Just got to keep that lead warm. It's amazing sometimes how fast the heat can sink out of that lead. And you got to keep going back, keep going back and laying a little flame on it. See, it's starting to get more of the shape that we need. It's got plenty of lead on that inner flange, so we can we can file that when he's done. Now he's going to try to shape that inner that concave curve in there. As you might have saw before, when we started started this, there was uh, brass work in there, so some of that. Some of those pieces in that headlight area, since this was all changed, uh, 57 Lincoln uh, headlight rings were put in this car, and that metal was all pieced together, and Valley Custom pieced a lot of that metal together with, with brass, which is great for leading. Actually, lead uh, sticks better to, easier to brass than it does to steel. So if you've got a, a brazed seam uh, joining two pieces of steel, that's a perfectly good marriage for laying lead on there. But you certainly don't want any, uh, any flux from your brass work to be left on that. It all has to be cleaned out. 